Many existing homes and buildings nowadays are being retrofitted with insulation. As energy codes and thermal comfort have been driving the market towards more energy efficient buildings with higher R values. However, when we go to add insulation, we have to acknowledge that we are immediately changing the moisture balance in the building, and if we insulate the wrong way, this can lead to the rapid deterioration of the structure. There are plenty of ways to insulate an old home or building, however, the existing conditions, historical value, logistics, and budget can all have a substantial impact on what strategies can actually be used. For example, we can't retrofit exterior insulation in a lot of historic buildings since it would change the appearance of the facade, and so we're limited to insulating from the interior. Now this poses a bunch of other challenges, since insulating an older home or building from the interior can lead to unforeseen moisture issues like condensation, and will impact the drying potential of the building since heat flow will be reduced. In this video, we're talking about how we're using smart vapor retarder membranes in insulation retrofits to address these moisture issues for a wide range of different building conditions and applications, and why they could be a good solution for your remodel or insulation retrofit. This video was made in collaboration with 475 High Performance Building Supply. Let's get into it. Now, last time we talked about what smart vapor retarder membranes are and how to use them. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to go and watch that video first, which we'll link up here. But just a quick refresher on what smart vapor retarder membranes are and what they do. These are essentially a vapor variable membrane that we use as an air barrier, and we're essentially going to use this membrane on the interior side of an assembly to control condensation. But unlike a traditional vapor barrier, such as standard polyethylene sheeting, smart vapor retarder membranes increase in permeance as relative humidity increases beyond beyond around 60%. What this essentially does is that we're not trapping moisture inside the cavity, which is extremely beneficial especially when we go to insulate older homes and buildings from the interior. Now I should emphasize that the air tightness of this membrane is extremely important to the performance and function, as we don't want any interior air leakage depositing moisture laden air into that assembly, as it could find a condensing surface. And while a smart vapor retarder membrane won't trap moisture, we still want to prevent moisture from getting in there in the first place. Now when we're insulating an older building, and we can't insulate from the exterior, but rather within a framed cavity, we're limited in the insulation strategy that we can use, as we are mostly relegated to either bat or blown in insulation or spray foam. The problem with using fibrous insulation materials like mineral wool, cellulose, and fiberglass is that none of these materials are air barriers or vapor retarders, which means that if we use them in isolation in colder climates, we have a very high condensation risk. What about closed cell spray foam? While spray foam does provide the benefits of an air barrier and a vapor retarder for condensation control, we've actually found that it's not really the best solution for retrofits if it's installed on the interior, as we found that it has the potential to off-gas long after the initial installation, it doesn't always adhere to the substrate that it's being installed on, it's relatively rigid, and so if there's building movement with fluctuations in moisture and thermal cycling that results in expansion and contraction of the building components, the spray foam can actually crack, which negates the benefits of an air barrier, and then we get air leakage on to the back side of the sheathing and condensation. What makes it worse though is that because spray foam is a vapor retarder and has a very high R value per inch, the condensation that forms on the back side of the sheathing has a very difficult time drying out and we get rot and decay over time, and so we try to avoid spray foam for those reasons. However, smart vapor retarder membranes like Intello allow us to use fibrous insulation materials in isolation, as it will serve as an air barrier and a vapor retarder, which really helps to simplify our insulation strategy, since we don't have to worry about using multiple insulation products or worry about the risks of using spray foam, and the fact that it's vapor variable allows these assemblies to dry back to the interior if there's moisture present. This is really a game changer when it comes to condensation control. Let's talk about using a smart vapor retarder membrane on framed walls. We of course want to make sure that we don't have any active leaks or moisture issues in those existing exterior walls, because then insulating will of course result in problems whether or not we have a smart vapor retarder. We have to address water management first, and after that's been addressed, we can focus on insulation and condensation control. But for this example, we're assuming that we don't have any active leaks or any moisture issues, and that the framing is in good condition. We can simply insulate the framed cavity using any unfaced bat or blown in insulation of our choosing, whether it's mineral wool, fiberglass, cellulose, wood fiber, or sheep's wool, they all work. Now, depending on the existing conditions that you're working with, it may be a good idea to spray the base of the wall at the sill point connection with a spray applied sealant to prevent any convective loops within the stud cavity. In this case, we like to use Proclima's Viscon product, which is a highly flexible vapor variable fluid applied water and air control layer that can be rolled or brushed or sprayed onto a wide range of surfaces. And we've actually been using this for a lot of different building applications because of these unique qualities. It's also low VOC and doesn't contain any red list chemical which is a huge plus. 
Then we have the Smart Vapor Retarder Membrane. In this case, Intello is our preferred product, and it's stapled to the studs and taped at the joints and seams to provide a continuous and monolithic air barrier. We're using Proclima's Tescon Vana Tape, which is a highly aggressive multi-purpose flashing and air sealing tape that's compatible with a lot of different substrates, and it's the recommended tape by the manufacturer as it's compatible with the Proclima systems. The membrane is sealed to the base of the wall with a flexible adhesive, in this case the system component is called Contiga HF, and we like to apply an additional strip of tape as a belt and suspenders approach to air sealing that base of the wall connection. Now, we're not done quite yet. We want to install some horizontal strapping over the membrane to provide a service cavity for electrical conduit and any plumbing runs, and to provide a fastening base for the drywall or interior finishes. This is basically so we can limit the amount of penetrations into the Intello membrane, as it's serving as an air barrier, and any holes that we do make in the membrane, we want to make sure are properly air sealed. This brings us to another point, which is, if we have wire penetrations in that smart vapor retarder membrane, we want only one wire per hole. When we have multiple wires penetrating the same hole, we tend to have a more difficult time air sealing around that penetration. Proclima does make these really cool gaskets that can be integrated into the Intello membrane that allow for multiple penetrations, but each individual penetration is essentially gasketed. It's not 100% necessary to use, but it's really nice to have since they're quite affordable. What's nice about using strapping is that we can actually insulate the smaller 2x3 cavity with more insulation if we choose. It's not 100% necessary either unless you're trying to meet certain performance standards, but it's certainly an option if you want to bolster the R value of that wall assembly beyond the depth of the existing cavity. This works for masonry buildings as well, granted that you're doing a good job of controlling concentrations of bulk water. We've been finding that a lot of older masonry buildings in places like New York City are being haphazardly insulated, and a lot of people are finding mold growth within their wall cavities on the backside of the drywall if they insulate in isolation with fiberglass or rock wool. Our approach has been to apply a vapor variable air barrier on the interior side of that masonry wall. In this case, we're recommending that same spray applied Viscon product. Then we install a layer of rigid rock wool, in this case, rock wool comfort board, directly against the walls. And then this will provide the benefits of a thermal break and will uncouple the studs from the masonry. Then we insulate the stud cavities with unfaced rock wool comfort bat. And then we apply our taped Intello membrane right over the studs for the air barrier and vapor retarder, two by strapping and gypsum board. If we're dealing with especially damp masonry walls, we actually swap out the Viscon for a taped dimple mat, which is discharged to an interior drain and vented at the top of the wall. This completely uncouples the framed wall assembly from the damp masonry and allows water to drain out since we wouldn't want to rely solely on a negative side waterproofing in this case. We actually have a whole video on insulating old mass masonry walls, which you can go and watch right up here. We're also using smart vapor retarder membranes to address roof assemblies in both vented and conditioned assemblies. For vented roofs, we're using these membranes primarily as an air barrier that we can apply to the underside of the ceiling joists or the rafters. It's really important that vented roof assemblies are completely airtight at the ceiling plane to eliminate the potential for moisture issues in the attic space and mold growth at any poorly sealed ceiling penetrations. We actually have a whole video on insulating and air sealing existing attics, which you can go and watch up here. First, at the top plates of the exterior walls, we like to spray that fluid applied Viscon product to air seal the sheathing to top plate connection to prevent any potential air leakage from the interior into the attic space through those exterior walls. We of course have plenty of penetrations on the interior of our exterior walls, and warm, moisture-laden air can find a path into the attic space through these penetrations. We want to create a monolithic air barrier from the ceiling to the exterior walls, and the spray-applied air barrier helps to transition the smart vapor retarder membrane to the sheathing. Any large holes that have been cut into the top plates will need to be patched prior to the application of the spray-applied air barrier. In many cases, we can just use a strip of the Tescon Vana tape. Then we just air seal the membrane to the top plate and any sealing joist penetrations. Just like our walls, we want to tape all of the joints and seams of the Intello membrane and seal around any recessed lighting or any other ceiling penetrations. Then we install strapping that's perpendicular to the ceiling joists or framing to provide an airtight service cavity for electrical conduit, as well as a substrate for the drywall. We really want to avoid any unnecessary punctures in that membrane. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like, and subscribe for more weekly building science videos, and make sure to go and check out 475 High Performance Building Supplies channel and website, where they also have a ton of free building science resources on how to use these smart vapor retarder membranes for retrofits and remodeling applications, as well as in new construction. They are the exclusive distributor of Proclima products like the Intello membrane and all the other system components. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.